Rain is in the forecast for tomorrow's game. Pitt, Georgia Tech, it's going to be a slick one. And that's exactly why Pitt should rely on Izzy Abani Kanda and Vincent Davis. We're going to talk about the strategy Pitt should have coming into this game and the issues that Georgia Tech maybe could even present, even though this is not a particularly good team. It's coming up today on this episode of Locked on Pitt. <laughs> You are Locked On Pit, your daily podcast on the Pittsburgh Panthers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Everybody, welcome to the Locked On Pit Podcast. As always, I am your host, Nick Fairbaugh. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to all that great stuff, folks. Today's episode of Locked On Pit is brought to you by Underdog Sign Up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code locked on and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Folks, I want to talk about this Pitt Georgia Tech game a little bit. Now, this isn't a game that when you look at it, you're particularly worried about if you're Pitt. I think this is one of your easier games on the schedule. And again, that's not just what you saw From the outset, it's what you've seen manifest throughout the year. This is a team that just had its head coach and athletic director fired. Jeff Collins and Todd Stansberry are gone from the Georgia Tech athletics program and football program as well. So this is a athletics program that is still trying to figure things out in the wake of that firing. And so you really don't necessarily know what teams are going to be after a head coach is fired. I think that head coach being there, that lame duck head coach like Jeff Collins is and was, almost gives you a sense of security. You almost know what you're going to see. Like, you do know what Jeff Collins is going to bring. You've played him before. And he is absolutely going to bring to the table what he has brought to the table. He has an identity to him. But now, this is certainly a very, very interesting matchup because of that factor. Jeff Collins is gone. A lot of the struggles you look at when you watch Georgia Tech play, and I'll say this, Georgia Tech has had spouts where they have played teams tough. They played Clemson tough, for example, and it's just not a team that has any level of consistency. The UCF game was really bad offensively because Georgia Tech just was not able to convert in the red zone. They had a few really bad turnovers. It was a mess. It was an absolute mess for Georgia Tech. There's no doubt about that. And then you look at bad penalties, right? Untimely penalties. And so, listen. This Georgia Tech team, it's not very good. But there is talent. And I don't want to throw that out there because I don't want to throw it out that these players are untalented. You have a player like Charlie Thomas on that defense who's a really, really good linebacker. He's physical. He's fast. He's got the instincts. He's a heat-seeking missile. He's a really good football player. This is a better team than they were last year. They can play teams tough. I think people need to realize that, that they can play teams tough, and they can give you some issues. It's not a good Georgia Tech team, but there's talent here. Jeff Sims is still a very talented quarterback. Now, no Jameer Gibbs, which is obviously going to change the identity of his offense. But I look at interim head coach Brent Key, and it's going to be about the players coming out and playing fired up. That's what you're going to have to see from them. And so that's the thing that I look at when I look at Georgia Tech. Talented, don't know how they're going to respond. They have obvious issues, and they haven't had any any level of consistency. But do they have any under their new interim head coach, Brent Key? Or is that just going to be the identity of this team? We'll see. It's a very, very interesting situation to walk into that you really don't have any security in because you really don't know what the identity of this team is going to be now that Jeff Collins is gone. Now, 
I talked about the weather in the introduction being a massive factor in this game. It's going to be a big factor. The remnants of Hurricane Ian are going to be in Pittsburgh. It's going to rain all day long. This game's not till 8 o'clock, obviously. It's a primetime game, but it's just going to come down. It's not going to be a thunderstorm. It's not going to be particularly heinous in that regard. It's just going to be a steady stream of 14 hours of rain on that field. I mean, it's supposed to start raining around the morning. We're talking 6, 7 a.m. That's at least 12 hours of rain that is likely to be expected. Could be as many as 14, even 15. This is going to be a sloppy, dirty field. It's going to be a mud ball. It's going to be a mud bath. This is going to be an ugly football game. And in that slick type of rain, you get that cold rain too. It's going to be 53 out. It's going to be cold, slick, muddy. It's going to be fall football in Pittsburgh to the max. And you're not going to have rain that's stopping. This rain is going to keep coming down and coming down and coming down. It's just going to keep going. And that's going to be a particular issue for Pitt if they wanted to pass the football. Here's the issue for Georgia Tech. They are an abysmal run defending team. Abysmal run defending team. They allow over 200 yards per game on the ground. Their run defense in the past two weeks has allowed over 500 combined rushing yards. They allow explosive plays, efficient runs. They have not been able to stop the run up front. If there is a weakness on this team, you look talent-wise, that front seven, specifically though the defensive line for Georgia Tech, is not that good. It's not that good. And so Pitt, which has leaned so heavily on a Bain Kanda, Vincent Davis, and the stable of running backs – to get through the injuries and get out of this stretch against Western Michigan and Rhode Island on skate, they're going to continue to rely on that because it makes sense. It's going to be a sloppy football game. You're not going to want to throw the football that much down the field. And so you're going to be able to, you're going to have to run the football a little bit and control the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a battle of wills. And Georgia Tech thus far has not been able to do that this year. And that's the big thing. Pitt's going to have to run the football, and Israel Abanikan is going to have to be the focus. And you're going to see Vincent Davis and Sebo Flemister and Daniel Carter mix in there to help that out because Pitt's not playing for style points, man. They're not. I know that spreads all the way up to 24 now. But Pitt should be a team that if they win 35-17, to 17, they should be very happy with that win. This is not going to be a Sparks fly game to me. It doesn't have the makings of a shootout. It has the makings of a sloppy, muddy game. And it's going to be a test of the line. And this offensive line is going to have to be big in this game. But make no doubt about it. The way to go is to run the football. and Do it early and do it often. And get after that Georgia Tech defensive line. Because they have to answer those questions before you deviate from that plan running the football makes the most sense giving the conditions and the strength that you have been working on in that area of your offense to be quite honest running the football has turned out to be explosive it's turned out to be efficient for Pitt. so why not do it if you continue to be ahead of the chains i want to keep discussing georgia tech and a little bit of pitch strategies against this team moving forward but first folks I want to let you know about underdog fantasy because this episode is brought to you by underdog fantasy the easiest place to spice up college football season listen folks you can go right now to underdog fantasy and you can put a ton of pick em choices for your team in each week listen you could go through and put an over-under on Izzy Abanikanda's rushing yards right now, if you so wanted to. The over-under right now is about 78 yards. You want to put that over? I'd put the over down on that one. You can do that. If you like 
Keaton Slovis to maybe throw the ball a little more, even in the wet conditions, feel free to do that. If you want to put them both together and you feel that Izzy and Keaton Slovis are both going to have big games, feel free to do it. If you like Kanani Mumfield to have the big breakout game he's been waiting for, feel free to do it. Or if you really want to feel spicy, put some down on Carter Johnson potentially stepping up at the tight end spot. You can do it, folks, if you want to. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. You just have to pick between two and five players across any team. It doesn't just have to be your team. You can pick anyone you want. It does not just have to be Pitt, and you can decide if they will finish higher or lower. It's one of the easiest fantasy games to play out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Folks, all you have to do is sign up with the promo code locked on. That's one word, locked on, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit $100. Get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. Folks, that's Underdog Fantasy promo code locked on. Again, that's just one word, locked on. Get in on college football pick em action today. All right, folks. Welcome back to the Locked on Pit podcast. We are continuing to discuss this Georgia Tech pit matchup that is very intriguing. And, and you look at the Jeff Collins firing as something that should allow Pitt to potentially trounce them. But again, that's that highly motivated factor. We don't know how this team's going to come out and play. Jeff Sims is athletic. Jeff Sims has a good arm. Jeff Sims is a pest in that regard, man. He is a guy that can be dynamic when he wants to be dynamic. And that gives Georgia Tech... The ability to be explosive, and they have had explosive plays against Pitt. They just haven't had any semblance of consistency. Pitt has been able to get turnovers both in Atlanta and at home. They've been able to run the football. They've been able to pass the football. Pitt has been able to show up Georgia Tech consistently in the Jeff Collins era because they've been better coached. And that has been the biggest thing to me, is that you look at what this team has done against a team like Georgia Tech thus far this year. And you look at a team like Clemson and how they won that game and how they ran the football. Yes, there there are good players on this Georgia Tech team, but they don't have the dynamic speed anymore of a guy like Jameer Gibbs. Now, they have multiple running backs. Hassan Hall is going to be someone that everyone should be familiar with from Louisville. They have Dante Smith and obviously Jeff Sims himself can run the football at receiver. you got Nate McCollum, Malachi Carter, Malik Rutherford. These are a few names that should ring bells as well. Uh, in the Pitt fan mind, we've seen some of these guys before play Pitt. Um, but you look at Jeff Sims' numbers, only a 60% completion percentage, two interceptions, two touchdowns, 13 sacks. There's been a lot to me about this offensive line for Georgia Tech that also – gives opportunities for Pitt to maybe make things happen. Jeff Sims is a hot and cold type of player. For example, plays against Clemson really well, comes out against UCF, looks awful. I mean, he just looks awful, man. But he is a guy that at his highest, he is a guy that can play extremely well. And so he has the highs of the highs. But there is not a lot of consistency. There's dynamicism. There's there's dynamism on this offense. There's absolutely a level to which this team can play ball and create explosive plays against you. But it's not with any consistency. McCollum, for example, is a sh- really shifty, fast, dynamic returner. And so if you look at a guy like that, he's got to be a guy you look at because get him with double moves, match him up with Eric Hallett. He's a speed guy that could be a big threat. So I look at a guy like Nate McCollum as someone who could definitely be a threat for Pitt. But you also look at this offense and you look at the numbers that they have put up throughout their games. And it's just hot, cold. It's good, bad. Red zone has been atrocious. I mean, they have been completely hot and cold at pretty much all levels of the field 
throughout most of this season. You look at their third down conversion percentage. I mean, it's awful. 25% right now. That's what they're converting on third downs. That's just not good enough. And that's because they get themselves into a lot of third and longs. They've had three fumbles lost this year. They fumbled the ball seven times overall. I mean, this is a team that just has turnovers, and they cost themselves consistently. Now, they haven't had a ton of penalties offensively, which has been good for them. But the ebbs and flows of this offense, man, it's something to look at. They haven't been particularly explosive either through the air, which is something interesting because obviously against Pitt, you probably remember them running a lot of double moves and being able to get those explosive gains, but that hasn't really been the case thus far for them this year. So they haven't been explosive enough either. And so I look at this team, the rushing offense hasn't been all that good, about 120 yards per game. The red zone offense is bad, only converting on 38% of their opportunities in the red zone. You would like to see that go up a lot. And conversely, the defense as well, allowing it 94% of the time they are allowing a score. That is a high clip for this team. And they're not an efficient passing team either. So there is a lot of issues with this team being that hot and cold motor they will get in big plays i think they'll get in a big play they'll get in two three big plays against Pitt. i just also don't think that's going to be nearly enough to beat Pitt. i think Pitt's going to be able to control the football game i think Pitt's going to be able to largely control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football they should they're better on both sides of the football in the trenches so this should be a game where Pitt's defensive line, for example, shows up in a big way. This should be a game where you look at Pitt's offensive line. This should be a statement game that Western Michigan and Rhode Island weren't just flukes because they're Western Michigan and Rhode Island. This should be a game where they really impose their will. And so the game plan is very obvious to me, is to get those turnovers at the opportune time because clearly it has been possible to do this against this Georgia Tech team and run the football uh, very well. And so I want to highlight just a few more stats, but first, folks, we're going to go to a quick break. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Locked on Pit podcast. So we're continuing to discuss Georgia Tech and Pitt here. We're talking about the inconsistencies of this Georgia Tech team and the ebbs and flows that you look at. And you look at run defense. And Georgia Tech has been at the very bottom of this. But they've been a really good pass defense. This secondary for Georgia Tech, to me, is pretty strong. They were a young group last year. I think they've grown into their own. Charlie Thomas, that we talked about earlier, is a great coverage player, already has a pick this year. Uh, He is a guy that I think has to be the X factor to circle. They better be watching out where Charlie Thomas is at all times because because this guy will fly around the football field, and he's tough. you got to look for where number one in gold is at every single play. He's a senior. He is their senior leader, and he's going to be the guy to look out for. But here's the thing. You can have that great secondary, and they do, but when it's the wet conditions like this, Pitt's going to just keep everything underneath. They're not going to try and go over the top. There's no reason to do that. They're going to try and get quick, easy completions where they can get five, six, seven yards and not force things that aren't there. And I think that's a smart way to go if you're pit. Run the football because right now, everything that points in the direction, the weather, pits momentum on the ground. Georgia Tech's stats in terms of their rush defense being as poor as it has been. The lack of tackles for loss on this Georgia Tech defense overall. It is clearly, to me, pointing in the direction of Pitt just running the football. And again, this is a team that doesn't get that many sacks. They allow a good bit of sacks. Bad in the red zone on both sides. This is a those key areas. And so, Izzy Abani Kanda 
when you look at it, should be a guy that is the focal point of this game. So should Vincent Davis. They've been able to create a system of efficient running, and they have been able to get four or five yards. Even when the blocking isn't there, they've been able to grind out those tough yards to get themselves ahead of the sticks, and it's been able to help Keaton Slovis in this offense settle in a little bit. And in a rainy environment like this, that's going to be as important as anything. So Pitt can't force their hand too much. They've just got to keep it going. And so when you look at this Georgia Tech team, Charlie Thomas that we talked about, he's out for the first half after a targeting penalty last week. So Pitt's going to probably try and attack that starter linebacker position. I mean, not only that, you look at this Georgia Tech team, man, nipping at ankles, not wrapping up. Tackling has been an issue. They have turned what is a lot of plays that maybe should be, say, I don't know, four or five yards into 15 and 20 yards. They've allowed chunk plays because they haven't been able to, to attack athletic, dynamic players like that. And so this is a team, man, that – We'll see what they do under their new coach, Brent Key, but they were not well coached defensively because they continually allowed runs that shouldn't have been as long as they should have been to become big plays. With Charlie Thomas out, Pitt has to attack. Pitt has to attack there. With him out the first half, they have to attack the ground. Everything points to the ground game. And maybe Georgia Tech steps up and tries to stop them and does – But everything you look at with a Banny Kanda, this is probably the best running back they faced thus far. Izzy Banny Kanda is that guy. They have to continue to go at this run defense. And so I, I don't know what this Georgia Tech team is going to come out with looking like on Saturday. It's an enigma. You never know what these teams coming off with a fired head coach are going to look like. But the game plan can't be any more obvious for Pitt. It has to be running the football. It has to be smash mouth play. It has to be ride the hot hand on the ground. Continue to ride the man that has gotten you to a lot of where you have gone thus far. Ride Israel abandoning Canada. Because he is a guy that can truly carry this game on his back and just blow it wide open. He's so explosive. And you talked about the profile of big plays given up by this Georgia Tech team. Whether it's quarterbacks, running backs, whatever, missed tackles, athletic people, athletic players, quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers have been able to turn small plays into big plays because this Georgia Tech defense allows a ton, a ton of explosive plays and that is exactly why i just favor pitt again pitt's not a flashy offense in terms of a lot of what they do but what they are is this pitt offense is explosive and efficiently so they are very explosive and you look at their ability on early downs to get yardage and stay ahead of the sticks that's been an important part of this all and Georgia Tech just hasn't had that success in key money downs, key money situations to where I can say, well, let's turn it over on a new leaf. The one good, good thing to me about Georgia Tech's team is that they profile extremely well as a pass defense. But with the rain, with Pitt's reliance to, to run a lot recently, with their reliance on that rushing attack, what's the point in throwing the football and coming out and deciding to dice them up. Just run the football. Charlie Thomas is out the first half. That's the easiest thing to do. All the weaknesses of Georgia Tech point to that. Make them stop you before you go away from that. It has to be easy. It's been their bread and butter so far. Run the football. Set up a little bit of play action. Let Keen Slovis get the ball out quickly. And let some of these receivers make some plays. And, and that's how you win this game to me. In a sloppy environment, that's how you win this football game because you also hope your run defense can hold up against Georgia Tech and their rushing offense 
and hopefully neutralize them and force them to throw the football and get after Jeff Sims, force turnover, sex, whatever it may be. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening to the Locked on Pit podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with everything preview. We will talk about, we'll give the prediction. We'll talk even more in depth about the facets of these teams and how this game could play out. It's all coming up on the next episode of Locked on Pit, folks. Make sure to co- like, comment, subscribe, do all of that great stuff. And as always, as we end it, hail to P.